probably heard this type of music by now, but maybe you don't know what it's called, or where it came from, or how long it's even been around. This is house music. Electronic music has always zigzagged around the world in terms of influence and where it picks up momentum. By the 80s, electronic music was morphing rapidly into subgenres. In Chicago, house music was born. Prior to electronic music, the clubs were all playing extended disco tracks and breakbeats. So underground producers started taking to cheap electronic instruments and making quote unquote disco music on these instruments. And this was starting to birth the sound of house music. You can hear the direct disco influence from the kick drums on every beat, open hi-hats and cymbals, and the use of classic acapella samples. This sound was able to thrive in Chicago due to the clubs and underground record stores. It quickly made its way overseas, specifically in the UK, and people were finding this music in underground shops, but mainly on pirate radio stations or illegal radio stations that were being set up in public project housing or on shipping vessels floating offshore. It is kind of hard to find a good tutorial or even a breakdown on what this sound is. So I'm hoping this video can contribute to those searching how to make tracks in the style of that mid-90s spaced out deep house kind of vibe. Anytime you're trying to imitate a style, you want to figure out what BPM people were using. 122 is what I'll be using today. That is slower than what we're used to in 2024 with modern house music. You're never going to hear a house track without kick drums on all four beats. So that's exactly how I started out this track. I layered a couple drum sounds in MIDI and played it out and added a little ghost note and turned that down in velocity just so it had a little movement added to it. Okay, so here is my processing for the kick drum. I took most of the uh, low end out of it and compressed it so it would be a little punchier. This is what it sounds like. I also sent the signal out to parallel compression and also to that stock boombox plugin that I always send my drums out to just to get that extra punch and a little bit of EQ control. Once again, for the sake of this video, I'm showing off all the layers in the order that I added them. You don't always have to build your tracks with the drums first, but I chose to do that in order to make sure that I had the groove that I wanted. And in house music, there's always this open hi-hat that sits in between the beat and creates this bounce. I layered a couple open hi-hat sounds to create the one that you hear. There's the main hi-hat sound and two other slightly different sounds that I've panned to different parts of the ear and turned way down in volume. What you just saw there was me adding a closed hi-hat now just on every beat just to preserve that crispiness next i added a second closed hi-hat sound to create even more syncopation or bounce look at how the velocities are so different for each note here and also how off the grid the notes actually are if you want your notes to have even more swing you can drag some of your notes just some of them to be a little bit behind the beat or behind the grid line. Once you have a syncopated hi-hat pattern, you want to put that way down in volume so you only get your ear tickled by it. This next element is called a percussion loop. The use of a percussion loop is to add more of a bounce to your already existing drums. Notice how most of the frequencies are filtered out. It's very thin. It's just there for movement. This is how it sounded after I messed with it a bit, but this is how it originally sounded. I was able to speed it down and give it some texture within Ableton here. I changed the warp mode from beats to texture and messed with the grain size. the fun part of this genre is adding layers and layers until your sound is built up into this big thing. 
But in order to add so many layers, you have to be minimal with your idea in each of the layers. The drums were almost done, I just needed to add a clap. It started off a little rough, but I knew I wanted that layered clap sound. So I layered a couple different claps as you hear. And all those are playing all at once, being triggered by the instrument rack. As you can hear in the clap when I solo it, there's some extra noise at the end. It was a choice to really show off that it was a sample. Lastly, for the drums, I added a second clap that filled in any spaces and acted as a turnaround, along with improving the feeling of the groove. On all the drums except for the kick, I have the drum bus to manage the transients a little better. I have glue compressor also to do some more of the same. I have limiter managing my volume. And I also have a little bit of distortion making it all be perceived as a little bit louder. After figuring out a drum groove, I knew that I had the perfect foundation to start fooling around with melodic ideas. I got this preset bass sound that to me sounded close to a Roland 909, or at least close enough, and I was able to take that and start coming up with ideas for the notes and chord changes. At first I had only a few notes, and it sounded good, good enough to use, but I found that once it kept looping out, it started to get a little bit boring, so I added some notes to give it some life. I then recorded a second bass track so I could have a B section in my arrangement so it wouldn't just feel like all the same idea for the whole song. And here is my effects processing for the bass. I EQ'd it, gave it some distortion and some saturation, side-chained it to the kick drum, and filtered out that high end, giving it that warm tone. At this point, I was having a lot of fun with building this track, and it started to take some turns that made it characteristic. I have a bunch of sample one shots from like a Jay Dilla pack and they have all this timeless sounding samples that were clearly ran through original analog samplers. Your ears are guided by the fact that these long drawn out notes are switching between the two chords of choice but the thing that gives this its identity is the fact that I am choosing to chop this sample up and give it a little bit of rhythm where it didn't have it originally. I found the perfect sample for a counter melody. It was also in the same place that I found the first sample. It really has this bit reduced sound. It must have been put through like an Akai or something. All right, this next layer was this chord stab that I kind of borrowed the idea from dub reggae music. What use is building up new genres without borrowing from others? That's what I kind of think the philosophy was for producers making house music, and I guess anybody developing a new sound. I put an echo effect on the stab so I could give it more of a spacey sound and bounce the sound between the ears. And you also hear the frequencies sweeping because there is a LFO controlling the filter on this sound. It basically randomly sweeps the frequencies and gives it motion so I don't have to automate it. At this point, I was thinking that this track lacked a little bit of shimmering high end, so I added some ride cymbals.
since I was already listening for what I thought was missing. I pulled this acapella in. The original acapella was two semitones lower than what I ended up using. I used the acapella in two ways. The first way I used it was just triggering one-shot sounds out of it. I created my own groove by setting the markers in the instrument rack on the parts of the song that I wanted to chop up. And I also came up with a second variation on it so I could play that at another part of the song. For processing, I filtered out almost all the frequencies, making it sound like it was coming through a telephone. That way you could really hear it in the mix. When I brought the acapella in, I knew I wanted to let part of the acapella run as if she was the vocalist for this track. So I chose a section that I was not going to manipulate the way it was recorded. Without any processing, this vocal sounded very present. Obviously it was recorded very well, but what I was going to do was send it to space. I put a delay doing the Haas effect, I did a little EQing, some reverb, creating a small room sound, and an echo. After you have all the parts that you want to form into your song, you don't have to worry too hard on the order of things because the name of this game is just looping your idea and adding and removing different elements throughout the track to evolve the sound. The thing about electronic music is its purpose is to be listened on systems and be played by DJs and clubs. That means it's going to be mixed in with other songs, so when you arrange this genre of music, you want to keep in mind that it's meant to sustain a vibe and that your track will be played into another track from another artist perhaps or another genre, so the way that you build your track should be conducive to that thought. I chose to add most of the interesting musical elements in at the second half of this track. So the first half could be for development, and the second half could tell the story of what the song is actually about musically. So for the video this far, I accidentally kept on my mastering effects. This is what it sounds like without those. This is closer to what it sounded like when I was cooking up the track, actually. I was preserving all this headroom so I could limit it and smash the beat later on afterwards. If you notice where I'm peaking in volume on all my channels, it kind of averages about negative 12 dB. That's where I like to keep it in order to preserve the headroom that I need on the master channel. On my master channel, in order to get the beat hitting how I have it. I have flatline, it's a limiter. You can just use the stock limiter from Ableton if you want. Any limiter is fine. I just do that to really use up all the headroom that I have given it and make it as loud as possible. I also add in a pull tech EQ to bring out and round off certain frequencies and also a compressor to bring up the perceived loudness. 99% of the automations were added after I arranged the whole beat. With automation, I was just filtering in and out different instruments, and also I did a filter on the master channel itself too at one point, just to create a interesting moment. I think learning how to produce house music has taught me a lot about motion and creating movement in your track because with a genre that's so repetitive like this, it's one of the only ways that you can bring out a sense of evolution. You can learn a lot about music production by experimenting and trying to learn in other genres of music, and I highly suggest you try it out. For me, electronic music and house music has taught me how to make my drums hit harder, how to have a relationship between bass and drums, and it also taught me a bunch about sound design. 
that's pretty much it when it comes to making a house track from the 90s in my opinion but it mostly comes down to feeling and having fun when you're creating the track i was literally dancing in my seat when i was creating the drum rhythms remember to experiment with different genres in your production journey or music making journey it'll keep you refreshed and it'll teach you a thing or two. I had a lot of fun showing how to make this genre. It's something that I mess around with quite often. I sometimes even put electronic projects up on my SoundCloud. If you want to hear more things like this or even see other genres get made, make sure to leave a comment and also like this video so it can be seen by the people that deserve to see this. Thank you for over 200 subscribers and tune in for the next video.